This video was brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com YT. Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at use effect in React. If you haven't used effect before, we are going to be looking at all the scenarios and there's quite a few. But generally speaking, you'll be using it more for side effects, such as asynchronous calls, such as getting data from an API. But firstly, I want to show you how to basically just use the most uh, trivial examples, such as setting the title on the page or um, causing a re-render. So you can see how this works and how the dependency array works. And we'll look at the dependency array. So if you don't understand what the dependency array is, we're going to be looking at that. So right now, I have this very basic app. It's create React app. You can see here, create, well, it just says React app. And I have this very basic app. So there's nothing in here. You can just install create React app and you'll get this pretty much. I've deleted a few files, but they're not important. So what we're going to do, I've just pulled in React. You can actually pull in use effect if you wish. Um, you can just pull it in like so. Um, just make sure that it's this side and there we are. I'm not going to be using this. Like you'll see people, it just comes down to code install, whether they use effects like so, um, like that. You can also do react.use effect. For this example, I'm just going to do react.use effect. Now you will use effect if you don't have any sort of data processing library such as React Query, which can help you um, with GET and POST requests. Definitely check that out. It's very, very useful. Um, use effect is very strange. And uh, I think most people would agree that the mental model is cognitively hard to understand. And like, for example, here, we'll set the document title. I'll just put use effect example like so, and you see here it sets the title. Now, this right here, this syntax, is going to run on every re-render. Now, this is the callback, as you see here. This is what happens when this effect runs. Now, effects, I believe, happen after, um, well, they execute after a, re -render, after a render. So when your component mounts, then the use effect is gonna come in. So. There's other ways that this can actually be used. And I'm gonna show you how to get some data from an API. So we want to use a bit of state here as well. Um, let's not touch too much on this, but it's essentially where we can store some values. So like use state, um, we'll do react.use state. We'll just leave that empty for now. And I wanna show you how to cause a re-render um, manually. So we can do set update and we can just put this to false as in to say go from true to false true to false and we can just switch and go back and forth now the first one i want to show you is we can just copy this here um, and we can cause an update so we just put update there and we'll say console.log i re-rendered so if you come down here we'll get rid of the hello we can just have a button that has an on click and then we can go ahead and say set update and what you want to do here you can take the previous value so the previous value in state which is false um, and then you can go ahead and say bang as in give me the opposite and because it's a true and false value um, update actually cause a re-render we should be able to cause a re-render you see here it rendered the first time once right and that's fine like for example, if I took this out here, this empty, this is the dependency array. And this empty dependency array just says when the component um, mounts or you know lands on the page, just go ahead and run me the one time. So if there's another effect that goes on in here, this isn't gonna get run. And don't be scared to use multiple, multiple use effects. It's very useful and you don't want to be clogging these up with a bunch of if statements. So go ahead and use multiple but we can cause a re-render. So you see here, we've got a setter, our value here. It's false, we're just gonna switch this. And we can cause a re-render, there we go. It's 
re rendering this component. So it's pretty useful, right? Um, now, what we want to go ahead and build now is we're going to go ahead and I want to dig more into the weeds of what you'll probably end up using use effect for. And that is for asynchronous requests. So here, I just want it to render the first time. I don't want it each time uh, the component marks to go ahead and keep getting me data because it's useless. Like I don't need that. Um, I can show you how to manually get the data, but we don't want it to keep getting data each time the component re-renders because if this component was low down the tree, something happened to change, causing a re-render, we'll go ahead and re-render. Um, so I want, also want to show you how side effects works and there's a lot to take in. So definitely go ahead and read the React documentation. But we can say let did cancel equals false here. And the reason I always like have this around my um, API calls is because I don't want this component to like be destroyed or just like gone into the ether and then another component um, mounts. I want this one to like finish if it's in between making a request finishing a request in this section here, I don't want this to be interrupted. So I want to make sure this either con um, goes from the start to the end or doesn't start at all before this new component comes in. Because if not, you'll see an error in the console that says, you know, you're trying to update some state when a component's uh, being unmounted and that's not what we want. So I always go ahead and do this. Now we're gonna use fetch. You can go ahead and use Axios. I do much prefer Axios. Um, so we'll just say, fetch, uh, let's say joke. And then we're gonna say let the response equals await fetch, HTTPS API Chuck Norris dot IO jokes random. Right, so then we've got if it didn't cancel, um, which again, you could probably just wrap this in here like so. So if it's not canceled, uh, this will make the first call. Um, let's just move this here, but we can just wrap it. Um, with Axios, I, I tend to, uh, um, because you can just pull out the data and you don't have to like await the JSON response. I, I tend to just do it lower down. Uh, but nevertheless, let's continue on. So we'll say let data equals await the response dot JSON. Now we should have data there. So let's just check. We need to call this and you can call this here. You can have your functions outside if you wish. Um, but I do actually like having them inside if they're not being used and then I can do this uh, did cancel. You see here we have data. Um, let's refresh. And there we are, we have some data. So we want to pull out the value and the icon. So you want to use this particular like setup when you are actually, um, you know, making asynchronous or anything that's a side effect um, when you're using use effect. So here, just do set joke equals data. Um, so we'll get the data, there's no joke. So what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna display this at this point, right? So you can go ahead and just say, okay, if there's a joke, then um, you could actually just do like this. So we'll say joke and and, uh, we'll use a fragment in React. Um, for the first bit, we'll use a H1 and just say joke.value. Here we go. I think we've got the joke there. There we are. Throws his gum, Chuck Norris, um, well, let's get another. Throw gum powder over his french fries. Okay, through. Um, next, let's get an image. So if we get the image, we can just basically say jerk.icon URL. Um, and the reason here is like an, an object's gonna be uh, truthy, right? We're just gonna leave this empty, which should be undefined. Um, so that's why we can just basically do this and we can get out the data. Um, and I imagine, yeah, we'll have to give this an all. So we'll just set ID. I'll pull this down. You can see here, it's causing a re-render, which is cool, but just for this, but it's not re-rendering this one. Now, why is that? Well, there's nothing in the dependency array to say, if this changes, go ahead and rerun this, right? Now we did the dig cancel, but we haven't really finished this off because we have side effects and certain side effects such as adding listeners, you want to you know, unsubscribe. So like if you had a video player, you click play and you have a listener on that because it's not within React, for example. Um, you want to unsubscribe from that. 
So to unsubscribe, it's very, fairly simple, but some people do get confused by this. Like if you're connecting to Firebase, you want to unsubscribe if this component unmounts. Um, so basically we can just say did cancel equals true. So if this is unmounting, like it's uh, about to unmount and this is gonna get run, then this will not go in here and we won't get those nasty error messages. You can look into side effects more with React and use effect, but this is essentially what it is. You run something like this that says, okay, on the cleanup of this component on mounting, do this. Right, so, um, yeah, it's, re it's re rendering the component, but why is this not running? So we have to go back to the dependency array. This is re giving us, well, rerunning because we've got the update here in the dependency array, and when this is changing, um, we're just flipping the boolean from true to false, which is good. And then console.log, we're just, re, we're just saying, I re-rendered, okay. Now what happens if you wanna call this and say, cause a re-render or um, get me a, actually let's create another button. Um, we'll just say, get me a new jerk. You can use the same button. I just wanted to um, keep them both there. Get me a new jerk. Okay, so it says, get me a new jerk, but it's not getting me a new jerk. It's just causing this re-render. So, and that's fine. It's got the same on click, which is fine. But what you want to do now is you can essentially just put update in here. And you can say, get a new jerk and it'll get you a new jerk. Cool, right? So that's essentially it with use effect. You have the most basic, which re-renders each time. Um, so like say for example, uh, console.log, hello. Uh, so you say, I re-rendered, uh, cause a re-render, hello's there all the time. It's just re-rendering each time, each time. Now to just re-render the first time on mount, you just have a dependency array that's empty, like so. If you want to cause like this use effect to run, depending on a value switching or changing, you put in the dependency array. If you want to clean out a, like have a cleanup before the component gets destroyed, uh, you don't want to like still be in the process of getting data. That's when you use the uh, cleanup function. But yeah, that's pretty much it for use effect. Um, that will get you a long, long way using, uh, well, understanding these concepts uh, of, as to how use effect works. But mostly this is what you're going to be doing uh, with use effect. You will be setting the title as well, um, quite a lot, depending if you're using an SPA, which is a single page application, and you're going from different pages. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You can cause re-renders, you can get a new jerk if you go ahead and add it to the dependency array, because that's saying, okay, when it, if we think about that value, it's a Boolean that's changing from true to false, to true to false, back and forth, and it's saying, hey, this has changed, let's re-render this like so. And just be careful when using certain values in here, like this one will cause an infinite loop that'll just keep going round and round. So I better take out that object. Why does it do that? Well, objects have references, that reference will change on each re-render and it'll cause an infinite loop. Now it would do it with this one here. Why is that? There you are. It won't do it. Well, we're not setting anything in here. There's a difference like here, that's gonna set the joke and that joke's gonna cause the object, uh, which will be in the dependency array to have a different reference and it'll keep going round and round and round and round. Likewise with arrays. So just keep an eye on that. If you do run into an infinite loop, check out your dependency arrays. Make sure React will warn you if you do not have the necessary data in the dependency array that is needed. Um, in this case, update's not being used in here, so it's not whinging at me. Uh, if you have ESLint um, on, that should help and give you a notification. It's very important that you don't miss out certain values that React's telling you to put in the depend dependency array. So that's it for use effect. You have this use effect here that re-renders each time the component you know, changes or gets new data. This one runs when update changes because it's in the dependency array, the value. We show, I showed you an example of switching from true to false. This one here runs on mount because it's basically a, well, is an empty dependency array. And then we have the cleanup to make sure that we don't have a request that's going off or the component's not on mounting 
and we try and make a request to um, an API. But yeah, that's it. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, any questions, any questions, drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to help. So thanks for watching and I shall see you later. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.